Hey, how's it going? Jim Murray here with SellingOCNJ.com, your go-to source when it comes to selling or buying here in Ocean City and the surrounding area. Um, today, we're going to dive into a topic out of pure frustration for me, uh, the NRA ruling specifically to buyer broker compensation. That's the part of that ruling we're going to be discussing. I want to talk about where we were prior to that ruling, what that ruling ultimately was, in you know very brief layman's terms and then basically why i think it's a huge mistake as a seller to not offer compensation to a buyer's agent so number one where were we well we all know where we were okay the seller would calculate the cost of doing business of adding in a listing agent fee and a buyer agent fee so in the event that they were successful and having a um, acceptable contract given to them, they know that off the top they were going to be paying those two fees and just really factored it into the sale price, the cost of doing that business. And I actually feel like that whole philosophy was started in the idea of it is easier if you ask me to exit a market or exit the, you know, a particular property than it is to get into a property. You know, as a buyer, you have down payment requirements, title insurance. And I truly believe what happened is there was an idea of, well, we can make it more affordable for buyers to get in the door and not have that additional burden. And probably what happened is it wasn't a law. Probably what happened was it became an industry standard to be competitive with other properties at some point. And then it just kind of kept rolling to some degree. Um, so that's where we were. What happened with this ruling? To summarize, this is very basic. Uh, so there may be some smaller details that are left out, but basically the idea is that has now been separate, separated between the listing agent commission that the seller would pay and any type of buyer broker compensation. I don't think you're allowed to call it commission anymore. Now, you can choose to say, look, we want to list our home. We're going to pay our listing agent 3%. That's nobody's business. We're not offering a buyer's agent commission. You can do that. Uh, you can offer a buyer's agent commission, but you just can't advertise it on the MLS. So how does that work? Well, through text message, email, or via the phone, I can share with any prospective buyer's agents that have clients interested that we are buyer agent friendly. So to me, it's the same difference. They just basically added a step. The biggest change, though, for buyers is that you are now required to have a buyer's agency agreement signed with a buyer's agent that is specifically outlining either an exact percentage or an exact dollar amount for the services of that buyer's agent. And there should also be a set time that that agreement expires. That's it in a nutshell. That is now a requirement before you're allowed to look at a property. So... That's all well and good. I actually think that'll probably end up saving me time. You know, maybe I don't do as many uh, showings. Maybe I'm not working with as many buyers, but the quality of buyers that are willing to commit to that uh, should be better quality, more ready buyers. Um, you know, I look at it as, I think that it's a disservice to buyers though. I'm a relationship-based agent. I like to build rapport with people. I like to bring them out, show them two or three or four properties and show them through experience and knowledge of those properties and the neighborhood that I'm the right person to work for. Now, sometimes that would bite me in the you know what, because I would work with somebody and then they would casually walk into an open house and they would buy right through the listing agent because either they put pressure on them to use them in that format or not. Well, I would now be, prote uh, be protected for the length of that agreement if that happened. I would be protected as a buyer's agent with a buyer's agency agreement with that buyer. So they were the two major changes, separating the two different commissions, not making it a normal practice that you have to add it, or an odd practice if you're not adding the buyer's agent compensation, and then the requirement for the buyers to sign a buyer's agency agreement with a buyer's broker. Sorry for the tongue twisting here. So why I think that hurts sellers. And I would advise all of my sellers to factor the cost of paying, I'm going to rephrase that, incentivizing um, buyers by compensating, offering some form of compensation <clears throat> or a seller assist or a seller concession towards buyers, buyer broker representation. 
Number one, um, you can list your property and you can say that you're not going to pay a buyer's commission and you can try to negotiate down as low as you want. And you may find somebody that is willing to work for dirt cheap. But the question becomes, how knowledgeable is that person going to be? And how hard are they going to fight for you when it comes to getting the best price if they give up their own money that quickly? How are they going to be when they're negotiating for your money? And I think that that's a question that you have to ask both on a selling side and a buying side. So that's number one when it comes down to it. You can list it at whatever you want. But the bottom line is how Are you going to incentivize buyers to get through the door in what is becoming a more competitive market? And listen, you are nuts to think that you are ultimately going to not offer a buyer's agency compensation and somehow that's going to equate to um, being competitive in the market. The bottom line is buyers are going to factor that in whether you like it or not. It's no different than if you're interested in a property that needs a new fifteen dollars or $25,000 roof just to live in it. It's the same difference. If property A is offering that and property B is not, it's going to be taken into consideration. So my advice to a seller, factor it in out of the gate to your list price. Hey, this is the range I want to be in when it comes to selling my home. And I understand if I incentivize a buyer's broker, and I'm paying the commission to my selling agent, I'm happy with that range. Just factor it in. The other aspect of this that I don't think a lot of people are talking about is that you cannot roll that commission requirement into your mortgage. So now buyers have to take liquid cash, liquid cash out of their pocket, above and beyond the deposit, and they now need to pay additional cash at the closing table to pay for their representation. If you just factor it into your purchase price for the buyer, if you just factor it into the sale price as a seller, you're allowed to to encapsulate all of that in one clean mortgage. Hey, I'm selling for 300 grand. The the mortgage company doesn't care. They're used to that practice that you are then off the top of that going to be paying a buyer's agent and a seller's agent. They're fine with that. But if you separate that, you are now forcing the buyer to take additional cash out of their pocket And guess what happens to your buyer pool? It goes from this and it comes down to that. There's not a lot of buyers that have the extra cash that they can do. Um, So we have, number one, the additional strain when it comes to buyers. Number two, we have the idea that the real word there is incentivizing. um, And really, the idea behind it is, I look at it and say, think about it in this analogy. And I'm sorry, I'm trying to get my thoughts together here because I just had a great analogy here. When a buyer approaches a seller that's a for sale by owner, there's no agency, no realtor agency involved. Statistically, that seller sells for less money, takes them longer, and every buyer that is going to approach a seller is going to say, well, you're not paying an agent, that would be five or 6%. Hey, you're selling your place for 300 grand. I'll offer you uh, 280. Uh, You're not paying a commission. I want that savings. So the idea that sellers are going to keep more money in their pocket, I think is absolutely wrong. And the way I would like to leave it in this conversation with sellers is this. You're going to pay for it one way or another. If I'm working with buyers, I'm either going to get it out of your purchase price or you're going to include it in your purchase price. But one way or another, I am going to negotiate it so that my buyers are compensated for it. And look, as a seller, when you're in a hot market, you can have a decision to accept that. But the market we're going into, it's much more competitive. And you're going to find yourself that that's going to hurt you ultimately. So my recommendation is build it into your price and factor it in as the cost of doing business and incentivize as many buyers as you can to get through the door without the added stress. Uh, If you like this content, I ask you to uh, subscribe. I usually do about one, two, three videos a week. That's my goal here for the next couple months. 
Uh, and if you have any questions or any concerns, or if I can help you in any way, reach out. All right. Thanks so much. Appreciate you watching.